I came and helped on a stamped concrete job, and we don't do a lot of stamped concrete in our area because of the weather, usually around patios or pools. But I helped him do it, and I filmed it, and I'm going to show you how he did it, and then at the end I'll have a comment. Well, today's job, they're going to put a patio in, and it's not my job, and in our area, I'm not a big fan of using stamped concrete, but they're not that big. They're, they're real light, they're not leaving big indentations where the water will lay here in the winter. And on the back of these, you can see they got the handles to be picking them up. So, I'm going to show you how they that, that's done. Alright, they're going to pour uh, dye inside this uh, concrete truck. Pouring dye inside the concrete truck. Flat edge. It's flat Aluminum. edge stock. Watch how they're doing. He scrapes it. Close it. And then he closes it. He pushes it, tips it back, and goes the other way. And that closes up all those holes. That's why it's nice work with other masons. They all have their own techniques. Alright, Steve, he's a... Uh, bull floating. Bull floating. That's a, a newer kind. Highfalutin type, right? This is a knucklehead they call these. Knucklehead. You want to get that nice and flat, don't you? Stuff is called Kingdom Bubblegum, huh? Kingdom. You put it in the sprayer. It's liquid release. This is uh, the release agent that they're using, just so you know. It prevents the mats from sticking to the concrete. Otherwise, you need a funnel. Yep. Get it all. Uh, Walk in your Almost, and grab a mat. Yeah. He's playing a release agent on it. Okay. Spray it up. Spray it up. Release agent. <laughs> now you want a yellow one after that? Uh, uh, red. Red. Yes, sir. This one is a floppy, see so how? So you can go around the corners with it. So. In an area like this where the mat wasn't able to fit, you take a floppy skin, you put this down on your area, you tap it in. And this will give you all the air where you can't get it with the mat gives you your texture and you take your wheel and you cut it in after. There's your stone texture. You get your wheel. Take your wheel. There. There. Beautiful. Now you see as your mats are going, you'll see these, you just right. kick them back, keep your joints tight. Right, okay. Keep the mats tight, otherwise your seam will open up. By the time you get to the end, you'll have a big mess. Like this? Yeah. Here. Perfect. Good. And uh, this guy's keeping ahead of him as he goes. And he's putting the bubble yeah, gum once, on. Once we go straight, then we'll go, we're going we're gonna to come out, come out, come out. And once we're here, we get a straight row, then we'll do one row at a time. Oh, okay. Using the floppy one, the other ones are stiff. You don't lean them, you pick them up, put a belly, you pick them up straight. You pick them up That's straight. That's why they don't dig, see how they're nice and even? Right. Yep. And again, keep all your seams nice and tight. Right. What I, would, what I usually do is I'll take the, the trowel, break it off, 
push that right back in. Same thing here. All you want to do is have a nice, clean, definitive line. That's what we got the roller for. See the roller's cleaning it out? Right. Same thing here. Once they push that rock back over, I'll be able to get that mud and put it right back into place. A little spot like that. Seal it up. Done deal. Done deal. You know, it's right before him. He's using the finishing trowel to keep it flat. Sometimes when it's getting a little hard, he's got to get onto the tamper. And when you tamp, never tamp, tamp up until about here, because if you tamp over the edges, you'll blow out the rocks and it'll blow the concrete apart. So what I usually do is I'll put my foot on the edge, tamp right next to it, right. and embody the suede holes together, and you get a better impression. Okay. And when the seams are together, just hit them all together like that, because there's nothing that's going to pop out of each side. So something here. Nice and gentle, step. Here. Okay, when you got a spot like that, he wants to right, we get the bubble gum. Okay, you spray it first. Little spot. Spray your mat. Spray that mat. Pick it up on the two ends and straight up. Yep. And then every color is a different pattern, a different stone. that bubble gum on it after he did that. Can't put enough of this stuff on, right? Okay. Show that mat on. mat over it, fix the bad spots. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the patterns. This is the pattern. Every color has a different shape. See how thick this is? That's for the big mats. Then over here, when you get to the side, this goes for the edges. This is really bendable. Then when you get over here, you get this one. This is a mat to go over mistakes and walk out extra. So there's all different colors and different patterns and uh, just wanted to show you that. So it's 11.30 now and we got the whole patio stamped out. Now this is the coloring that they're gonna mix in with the bubble gum. Oh my god, you're naked. 
Well, he's walking on it. That's how hard it is. And what time is it? About one o'clock, huh? Yeah, it's close to one. So, what you do is just pick up your feet, don't drag them. Now you can see the colors coming out. You see more of the stone texture when this gives you the three-dimensional look when you put that color in there. You can see all the, the, the area of the stone. See when I come over the stone? Yep. You see more of the stone now? Yep. Starting to show now, the yep. stone. So there he is putting the color on. The color sinks into the low lying spots and it makes it look like real stone. And uh, you see any light spots, just throw it out there. I'm going to talk a little bit about that job. Around these parts, we don't use a lot of uh, stamped concrete, especially in driveways or sidewalks, because the winter comes, you go to snow shovel, the snow and the ice is still in those grooves. People drive over with the salt on the cars and on the sidewalks, it kills it but it's pretty popular around the swimming pool and around the patio. And you've all seen my little charts on how bad the weather is where I live. It freezes at night and it gets warm during the day. It kills stuff like that. But it's a lot, lot nicer than just straight concrete, and that I agree with. The release agent, he didn't care how much release agent he put on the concrete itself. He says it never bothers it, it's good and he sprayed the mats with it, but he never sprayed it again. He just sprayed the mats once. The only time I seen him spray the mat again was when he was using it for fixing up uh, a bad spot. Now that second die, he mixed that second die up and it was hard enough to walk on. And what that does is it sinks in all the low spots and it makes it look more like stonework. Now, you could seal it right after that if you want it, and I asked him, how do you, what do you use to seal it? He says that Quick Creek stuff, concrete sealer that they sell. He says you could do it in the next day, that's fine. Those mats are very expensive though, but you could rent them. There is companies that rent them out. I think it's a nice job. I think the guy did a really nice job and I did some learning myself there. So should you put stamp concrete in, yes or no? I think the answer is it depends on where you live and where you're gonna put it. And I'd ask the local guys in your area to see if it's compatible with the weather. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock, and that's it.